ever felt your local dive sites are getting a bit crowded or the famous reefs around the cities have way too much diver traffic, then the only way you will reach exclusive and remote locations is on board a liveaboard scuba boat. But liveaboards need some planning and preparation for such a trip. Some things could go wrong, but that's what we're here for. Today, I'm going to show the tips I picked up from diving on liveaboards around the world over the past 10 years on what to expect from liveaboard diving, what they cost, and how to prepare for them. But before you dive in head first, let's navigate the important logistics, preparation tips, and insider knowledge you'll need to make your liveaboard experience as smooth as a dolphin's glide. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's figure out what a liveaboard is, what you can expect, and how the overall experience will change the way you want to dive forever. A scuba liveaboard is a specialized boat that is set up for passengers to liveaboard, like a hotel. Diving liveaboards will have everything they need for set up the dive gear, fill the tanks, and smaller boats to get from the larger vessel through sometimes narrow or shallow areas where the dive sites may be. On a liveaboard, you will eat, sleep, dive, and repeat. When my wife and I started diving, we were on the fence on continuing with the sport. We enjoyed it, but there was a big gear hurdle to invest in and see sickness and spiral rearrangements from some of our day trips from the small boats just going as fast as they can through the channels were a bit tiring. Our first live board we did on a whim was in Raja Ampet and we were absolutely blown away with the experience from excellent crew, great friends we met, diving so remote we were the only ones at some of the dive sites and great excursions along the way. It was to this day one of the best experiences we had to date and we were solidly hooked into liveaboard diving and seeing how much there is to see that only the liveaboards can access to. I will warn you though, it will thoroughly spoil you in terms of the full diving experience but I can guarantee you'll be very tired by the end of the trip. You'll spend several days to weeks living on a specially designed boat accessing remote dive sites that day trippers can only dream about due to the, their distance from the land. Further, you'll wake up and have the dive sites all to yourself as the boat can take passengers to the dive sites before boats from the land can arrive. Did you know most liveaboards will range in how many guests they support per trip, but it will often range between 12 to 30 divers. Imagine it as an all-inclusive resort, but with the freedom to explore new underwater landscapes every day. You will work yourself into a rhythm where you will be eating and resting as hard and fast as you can, and then maximizing your time under the water in the most beautiful and unexplored places on this planet. You'll typically do three to five dives per day, including night dives, maximizing your time beneath the waves. Most liveaboards will standardize an itinerary around a seven day trip, which often means five days of diving. That alone usually blows away the amount of dives you can get on a non-liveaboard trip, which often ranges about two or three dives a day at most. Time goes by fast. And with so many dives, you'll often feel you need to fully utilize the rest in between the dives. Keep organized, tear down your equipment, and charge what you need, and then start resting up. Pro tip, you will be doing so much diving, you need to make sure not to overexert yourself between dives and drink lots of water to keep the compression sickness away. This immersive experience allows you to fully disconnect from the world above and connect with fellow dive enthusiasts. As in between dives, everyone on board will be in close proximity. Often, everyone connects with each other, most during meal times, which will break between dives, sometimes along the schedule of wake up, do your first dive, have breakfast, break, 
and then on to the second dive. Have lunch, then after the break, on to the third dive. Have a rest, and either at nightfall or sundown will be the last dive of the day. Ending the day on dinner where often folks will drink together. I've met amazing friends, and out of all my travels, the level of connection you will have with the crew and other guests on the boat is far superior than any other experience I've had with strangers. Now I can hear the gears in your head turning. This sounds amazing, Don, but what's the damage to my wallet? Given the relative remoteness that liveboards tend to take you and the amount of comfort they try to provide, you can expect liveboards to run quite a bit higher than land diving. However, this price usually includes accommodation, meals, and diving. I have been noticing in recent years the prices continue to increase due to inflation costs across the world. Liveaboard trips can range from budget-friendly to ultra luxurious, typically costing between 200 to 500 per person per day. You can take more budget-friendly liveaboards that usually give much less living space and sometimes a hostel-style bunk bed experience and showers they have to share with other passengers. Usually, more luxury liveaboards will be nicer, newer vessels, and provide plenty of space per passenger. Often, cheaper boats and older boats will have various systems such as showers, toilets, etc. that you may not always be working at 100%. From our experience, liveaboards for scuba diving are specially constructed and have specific equipment, designated dive gear setup facilities, camera rooms, and smaller vessels attached to the liveaboard, hidden expenses can sneak up on you like a camouflage cuttlefish. Equipment rental, if you're not bringing your own, can add $50 to $100 per day, not including nitrox fees. Marine park fees or port charge fees can tack on an additional 100 to 300 per trip. Don't forget about travel insurance, it's a must and can cost around 100 to 200 for a week-long trip. Gratuities for the crew are customary and usually range from 5 to 10% of your trip costs and often ask for payment in cash, although some allow you to charge it to a credit card at the end. Be sure to ask the boat before you go on the trip what the tip expectations are. From my experience, they are often expected and the crew depends on this tip money. The word tip or gratuity is more of a formality in this case. If you don't bring your tip money, you might just be left out with the sharks. Even though the tip is often expected, it's often not mentioned very clearly on a lot of boats. When we boarded our first live aboard, we were caught a bit off guard because we didn't bring extra money for tipping and we weren't cued into an extra expectation. While we were busy trying to figure out how we were going to make it work, we were informed that credit card works. So fortunately, all is well and we were not thrown overboard. Hopefully you won't get caught off guard as we did. It is worth mentioning, there are a lot of crew to make the boating operations work, consisting of the boat captain and his back-end staff that operate the boat and boat director that engages with the guests and the captain to make sure all the logistics and plans work out and everyone is happy. Sometimes they're dubbed the happy officer or the person in charge of happiness. Boats will have different front-end crew that interface with the guests more, such as the dive masters to guide you on the dives and the general staff that help with anything from driving the small boats to cleaning the rooms. And of course, factor in your flights to and from the departure point. According to a 2022 scuba diving magazine survey, the average liveaboard enthusiast spends about $3,500 for a week-long trip, all expenses included. So a good gauge of cost will be roughly 3.5k per week and of course depending on the relative luxury of the boat and the remoteness of the voyage. Next, let's dive into what and how you should pack for your floating dive resort 
because missing this part up could have dire consequences in your once in a lifetime trip. Packing for a liveaboard is like playing Tetris with your gear. Every piece needs to fit just right. Not to mention those pesky weight limitations you'll need to consider depending on the airlines you're going. Make sure you consider different limitations on every leg of the trip and pack according to the most restrictive leg. For diving, bring your certificate book, your logbook, and your personal gear. If you are renting, I'd recommend bringing two masks, one as a backup, and the clothes you will dive with. Most of the rest of the gear can be rentable. Typically, from what we've seen, most folk will bring their own gear over to rental gear from the boat because the boats often don't have great rental options. And if they do, it'll be kind of a one size fits all. So if you have kind of a different shape, you might consider bringing your own. If you bring your own, make sure you bring at minimum your BCD, regulator, fins, dive boots, wet or dry suit, SMB, and your dive light. Leave the weights, you will get those on board the liveaboard and it'll be a pain to bring in your luggage. Of course, all of your scuba gear will need to be checked in, so make sure you bring a good sized bag that protects your gear and make sure it's under the weight limit of the airline you will be flying on. It helps to have a soft shell or a collapsible luggage as often there is not a lot of space in the cabins. You'll be doing Jenga with your luggage, especially in the dorm style cabins. I remember when we went diving in Solomon Islands on a live board, we met this one lady, now our friend, who greeted us all after downing a full bottle of wine. She had revealed she was massively bummed and using the alcohol to make things a little bit easier, as well as all of her gear was lost and has not been found. Mind you, scuba gear is not cheap, but damned it all, she wasn't going to let losing all that gear and this once in a lifetime trip go to waste. She was going to make the best of it. The boat gave her free rental gear, a bathrobe for clothes, yes, a bathrobe, and we all enjoyed the trip together. Do keep in mind that wearing the same clothes every day might be your only option if you don't pack spare clothes in your carry-on. So a pro tip, pack your dive gear in your carry-on in case your checked-in luggage decides to take a different vacation as you did. These should be your must-haves, things you absolutely need for the trip so you can still make the best of it with the rentals without the rest of the gear. Consider packing a reef safe sunscreen to protect both your skin and the marine environment. Non-diving essentials include quick dry towels, sea sickness medication, and a good book for all those surface intervals you have. Don't forget a dry bag for electronics and a reusable water bottle to stay hydrated. A lot of boats will provide you with a reusable bottle, but it's not a guaranteed thing on every boat. So it's a good idea to bring one. Usually things on the boat are kept pretty dry, but there will be things such as excursions where you'll need to get off the boat and wade through salt water. And that's where a dry bag will come in real handy for such cases, and you can protect all your gear from that salt water. It's worth mentioning, for electronics you might bring, don't expect the internet, even if it is advertised that they will have it. Also, boats are reasonably very cautious about anything that can potentially catch fire, such as devices with lithium batteries. Some boats are using Starlink, and it works, but from my experience, is not consistent, so it is better to just plan to be without internet. Clothing should be minimal. Think swimwear, a few t-shirts, and maybe one nice outfit for the farewell dinner. Colder climates will need a bit more and perhaps a warm hoodie to protect from that cold breeze. Remember, space is limited, so pack light and smart. The cabins on liveboards are tighter than you think. Whether you're a liveboard virgin or a seasoned sea dweller, I hope this guide helps you navigate your next underwater adventure with the grace of a manta ray. But before you submerge yourself in non-stop diving bliss, why not surface for a moment and check out my next video on life-saving diving tips. It might just be the oxygen you need for your next aquatic odyssey. Check it out here. Until next time.